I was 35 and my wife was 29 when she scheduled her second ever Johnny Collegist appointment. She usually texts me constantly and before she went into the doctor's office, she let me know that's what she was doing. But on this day, she didn't reply to any of my texts until three hours after her appointment was over. When I got home from work, she was keeping herself busy by doing laundry and wouldn't look me in the eye. I finally got her to face me and asked why she was behaving differently. She broke down, crying immediately and told me she felt uncomfortable with the doctor earlier that day. I asked her for more details and she said he'd strapped her feet down in the stirrups and used his mouth for things other than talking. I freaked out. I started pacing and yelling, planning out how I was going to bring this guy down. It didn't take long for me to ask my wife if anything else happened and she hesitated to tell me that yes, something else happened. He had sex with her while she was strapped to the table. She still looked upset, but it was like she let her emotional mask slip. I could tell that she wasn't completely upset about it but wanted me to believe she was. I cried and let her believe I didn't see through it. Maybe it was because I couldn't accuse my wife of willingly sleeping with her doctor. Instead, I started talking about getting a lawyer so that we could sue him for malpractice. As soon as I mentioned this, my wife looked embarrassed and nervous. She said we didn't need to do that, she just wouldn't go back to him again. I told her that was crazy talk and he needed to pay for his crime. What if he abused other women? She looked at me dumbfounded, like she hadn't thought of me saying that and didn't know how to respond. The next day I was surprised that my wife felt well enough to go to work. I refused to go and planned on finding a lawyer. Just as I was about to call one, my wife's iPad bench. Curiosity took hold of me and I looked at it. There was a notification on her WhatsApp from someone she programmed as well. They made arrangements to meet at an address out of town in the last hour. She was scheduled to work. She told this person she'd be able to get off early with a winky face and when she was asked if she told anyone about yesterday, she swore she didn't. This scared the shit out of me. I was instantly certain that my wife was hiding something. I checked the clock and realized I had hours before they were going to meet. I called the divorce lawyer to talk about what my wife told me and what my best course of action might be. He agreed that it seemed odd and that I should do whatever I can to find proof of what she was up to. He suggested I hire API, but since I had an address, unbeknownst to my wife, I decided to go there myself and catch her red-handed. On the way, I picked up a GPS tracker. I was trembling as I waited in my car in the parking lot of a fancy restaurant. They probably picked this place to meet so that they might not be recognized. My wife arrived first, looking nervous. She got the table for two, visible through the front window and waited. I fought back emotions as I continued waiting. Soon, a wealthy looking man arrived in a nice car. He entered the restaurant and joined my wife at the table. I cried for a few minutes before getting out and placing the tracker on my wife's car. I got closer to the window but stayed behind a car while I took pictures. They talked and date without a care in the world. I sat in my car again until they each got into their cars and my wife followed him while I followed her at a distance. They arrived at a hotel and I drove around the other side so I wouldn't be seen. I paced outside for a minute, wondering how long I needed to wait so they wouldn't see me. I stood by the automatic doors and took a picture through the glass without activating the motion detector. They were standing at the counter, checking in. It was a very clear picture and I turned away to throw up. It took every ounce of power I had to resist beating him right then and there. I moved my car to the front parking lot far from the entrance, zoomed in on my camera and set it on my dashboard, pointing directly at the entrance of the hotel. I started recording after 10 minutes and a while after that, they both emerged hand in hand. They kiss each other goodbye and get into their own cars, along with the screenshots of their conversation. I have enough proof that they were having an affair. I got divorce papers and returned home after my wife. She greeted me with the familiar warmth I knew like nothing was wrong in response. I'll slap the divorce papers across her face. She gasped and demanded answers. I told her I was the one that deserved answers and that I had proof she was having an affair. She gasped and covered her mouth. All the color drained from her face and she asked me what I was talking about. I told her I didn't need to tell her. I knew she just needed to tell me the truth. She tried to say she didn't know what I was talking about, but she couldn't look me in the eye or speak louder than a whisper. Her behavior gave her away completely. I threatened to post a picture of her and the doctor on social media if she didn't come clean. 
I started recording her as she started panicking. She said there was no way I had a picture and stared at me in disbelief. I assured her I did and showed it to her on the camera. She tried to grab it for me as quickly as she could and we fought over it. I got it back and immediately locked myself in the bedroom with the evidence. When she stopped screaming and pounding on the door, I told her to sign the divorce papers and get out of the house. If she didn't want me to post the proof I had, she would listen to me. She sobbed loudly for a few minutes before leaving the door. I wasn't sure what she was doing or if she left, but I posted my proof on her social media anyway while she was being judged heavily on mine. She was trying to find someone to stay with. Months later, she was staying at miscellaneous places, sometimes abandoned buildings, all while we went to court. Her doctor's license was suspended and he moved away. Since there were no witness testimonies, no charges were pressed against him. My ex is still homeless, regretting the short-lived affair that cost her everything. I've resisted any urge to help my ex out in any way. I started attending counseling sessions and took up a new hobby. I've chosen to share my story because this stuff actually does happen to people and I don't want people to feel as hopeless as I did at first. Things can and do get better. Awesome job. I'm very proud of you for how you handled the karma. Serve justice not only to your cheating wife but also to her. AP continue to take the time to heal from this situation, but do know that things will look bright for you in the future. Now for today's second story. Hi all. I really appreciate this community and found it very helpful throughout this process. So I'd like to share a truncated version of my story. My ex-wife and I had been together for about six years before we got married last June of 2021. Getting married during a pandemic wasn't easy, but we had a wonderful wedding, and it was one of the happiest days of my life. Fast forward a few months later and my wife became a completely different person. She opted to go to the office regularly while I continued to work from home. We both worked from home throughout the pandemic. She worked for a big firm, so the longer hours seemed to be par for the course. But she no longer wanted to spend quality time with me on the weekends. Spending a lot of time with her horse and began to downplay my treatments, claiming I was no longer a go-getter. Even though I was doing very well at work, people say that the first year of marriage can be hard. So I started taking my wife on regular date nights to reinvigorate our relationship, but she remained withdrawn and judgmental, which was a big blow to my self-esteem. I racked my brain thinking of why I might have done to make her act and feel this way, but I couldn't come up with anything plausible. So I started to lose sleep, thinking I was possibly losing my wife to someone else. These were the worst months of my life because I couldn't believe you could lose the person you married so shortly after tying the knot. So I convinced myself it was the pressure of her job that was causing her to act this way. And I opted to suppress the negative thoughts to avoid exacerbating the issues we were having. She was actually gaslighting me the whole time, and I just didn't know it for D-Day. I organized a romantic weekend by the beach, despite my suspicions, in order to try and revive what we had prior to our marriage. I thought this would renew our bond, but she became more brazen with her disdain. I told her I loved her on our way to dinner and she didn't reciprocate. Later that evening, she had me take and said from a photo of her in a bubble bath. And when I mentioned that it was a bit too scandalous for social media, she responded, that's not what I'm using it for. We have been intimate throughout our marriage, but she refused to be intimate with me on this trip. That's when I finally confronted her on my suspicions and demanded she is honest with me. She denied everything for a while, but I convinced her I had provided it. And she finally confessed. She admitted to sleeping with her boss on numerous occasions for months and that he was pressuring her to leave me. I went through a panic attack, which I had never experienced before. And after finally calming down, I realized what a fool she was for falling for his lies. I told her I was going to inform his wife and she responded, she'll find out, but you won't be the one to tell her. That's when I knew my ex-wife had convinced herself she was going to run away with her boss. It was sick and a little evil, and I realized that my ex-wife was never quite married. The real her was this manipulative and vile stranger. She changed my flight that night, sent me to my parents' house and told me she would mail me some boxes of my clothes. I contacted the boss's wife via social media as soon as I got to the airport, and that's when all hell broke loose. Long story short, the boss never planned on leaving his family, and in order to try and save his marriage, 
He distanced himself from my ex-wife as quickly as possible. Apparently, HR had to get involved, and my ex-wife quickly gained a reputation around her office. She cried and pleaded with me to take her back. I told her she had made the decision and I was just completing her plan. After math, success is the best revenge. Life has been good now that the dust has settled. I live near some of my closest friends, met a wonderful woman and found a great job in California. I'm learning to love myself again and have realized that my ex-wife's opinion of me during our marriage is not a reflection of who I am or my inherent value. I'm truly happier without her. And while I occasionally feel disheartened by what transpired, I feel blessed at this. Truth came to light before we had kids. Up. I am deeply sorry for the pain your wife has caused you. The karma that happened afterward is absolutely beautiful. When these cheaters are in the affair fog, their mind becomes delusional and they start thinking the high they are experiencing will last forever. In this case, your wife idiotically thought her boss would leave his wife for her and then run off together and spend the rest of their lives together like some fairy tale. I'm glad to hear your wife was snapped back into reality. Now she will live with the consequences for the rest of her life. Thank you for taking the time to listen to today's stories. If you enjoyed listening, please don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, comment below with your thoughts on what happened. Take care.